let's remove this cross member from here. This is a 15 millimeter socket and this is 16. We're going to remove this intake pipe now. So before we try and pull this out of here, there's a little eight millimeter screw. So remove that first. We've removed this screw from here. Now pull this out. There's a couple of tabs that hold it in place and this should just come out now. So you can see the bottom tab and the top tab lock in place and this just slides in. The next thing I'm gonna remove is this cross member as well because it's in the way. I want to remove this uh, pipe as well. Uh, in order to do that you're gonna have a jubilee clamp underneath and then once you remove that clamp then remove the sensor here and then pull this out. The top of this uh, the filter housing should just lift up and slide out. Now let's lift this tab up and just unplug this sensor. I'm going to remove this Jubilee clip here. So what I'm using is this extra long quarter inch <clears throat> ratchet with a extension and a six millimeter socket on it. So just insert it on the, on the bolt, on the clip and just uh, gently loosen it. So this will loosen the pipe at the bottom and we're going to have to unclip the harness from here. Okay, that should be sufficient. It is loose and it's moving. So let's just remove this. Okay. We've loosened the clamp here. We've moved these uh, harnesses out of the way, the cables. Now what you want to do is just pull this out and just unclip it from here and then you want to lift this up so you can slide it out of the way. We've got this pipe open here so we don't want to drop anything in it. So what I will do is I'm going to try and close this hole because I don't want to drop anything inside. In order to gain proper access to the EGR valve we're going to need to loosen this e-torx bolt here which is E6. So you can see this is a special E internal Torx bolt. So we're going to loosen this and we're going to remove this harness or we're going to slightly or gently just lift it out of the way so we can gain proper access. In order to remove this electrical plug here, you need to release this tab. So lift it up. Now, I'm going to try and carefully show you on the other side there's another one so you need to lift this up and then if you can't do it by hand just use um, just gently obviously a pair of vice grips or big pliers and just pull it out so this is what you want to remove you want to remove this here it's pushed down so you want to lift it up and then this one is down so you want to lift this up as well just pull it out like that um, so this is the cable for the EGR valve and now we're going to remove some more cabling here in order to be able to lift this harness so we can gain access, uh, but just better access to the EGR valve. Got another connector here. If you want to just remove the EGR valve, you have one rubber pipe here and one at the back that you can't see and two T30 Torx bolts. So I'm going to use this quarter inch ratchet to loosen the bolts.
Okay, this is obviously never ever been removed from day one. So we can expect that the EGR valve is not great. I'm gonna get my magnet and pick up the bolt. And that's the second bolt from the EGR valve. The next step, I'm gonna show you how to remove the EGR valve. Now, if you've never removed this, it's gonna be pretty tight. So you're gonna to need to use something like this sliding hammer with a hook at the front. So what I will, what I'm planning to do is to be very gentle because we're obviously working with aluminum parts. So just put it somewhere where the metal is nice and thick. Job done. So what's stopping us to remove this EGR valve is the actual rubber hose on the other side. Let's see what we can do next in order to gain some space or in the worst case scenario we may have to remove the whole EGR cooler. The next step is to try and slide this vacuum control valve. So there's a little clip here, just push it push it down and this should slide out it's basically sitting on a flat piece of metal so once you get it out of the way then you can relocate it basically this is what uh, was hooked up on this here now this is out of the way you can even further move this and remove this as well from here, the actual control valve. Okay, finally we have the EGR valve out. I'm gonna bring you over closer to show you properly. As you can see, this is what's holding it in place. We've got this rubber hose here and I need to remove this clip. This is a factory clip. I have the same clip so then when we reinstall it we can put the exact same clip and just to make it easier I'm going to remove this one as well. Okay, there's obviously some coolant here, so we don't want to spill it. So I'm just going to insert one of the cross braces 10 mil bolts, just uh, stop any leaks. And now when I pull this, when I pull this hose out from the cooler, we will probably lose some coolant from here as well. Hopefully, just, just a tiny amount. Okay, that's that. I have a box of stuff that I keep. And these are rubber caps. So I'm just gonna insert it here, make sure nothing gets in. So this is it, that's the EGR valve. We're gonna try and open it now on the bench and see if we can free it up and clean it up. And then see what happens next. Hopefully we will save a bit of money from uh, having to buy a new one. But I doubt, because to be honest with you, it's 165,000 miles. So it's probably about time for a replacement. This should release freely, it shouldn't uh, catch like that and it should lock. Can you hear this? I mean, if this shaft is good and new, you will never hear that rattle. So this is worn. And the problem here is simply mechanical rather than electrical. So it just locks in here and then it won't release. So the motor is struggling and that's why it's uh, triggering a fault. So the motor is not able to <clears throat> close it back. Okay, so we're going to leave the harness as it is for now because I don't have enough clearance. And the next thing we're going to remove is these bolts here that hold the EGR pipe. Now these are internal 8, so that's E8. So 
Wilson needs. This was probably one of the hardest connector I have ever had to remove in my life. I wanted to be super gentle because obviously you don't want to break it. Um, but this was obviously never ever removed. Okay, let's proceed with the next step. Okay, I've removed this pipe from the joint here. So we gained a little bit more space for the wiring. This is obviously, we want to have this out of the way. I want to show you this uh, rusty mess here. So really don't know how I'm going to take these out. They're so badly corroded. Now let's see what we can do. There's one underneath, even worse. to free the top one but the bottom one is really bad the head is completely collapsed so I'm gonna have to remove the whole EGR cooler in order to remove this EGR cooler you have two bolts here these are T45 this one is not too bad we can access it although it's still tight with, with these um, air conditioning hoses here but the bottom one is gonna be a problem so let's see if I can insert my long torx bit this is 3 8 ratchet oh. Just be prepared to catch the coolant here because when you pull the cooler out, a um, fair bit of coolant will come out. So if you have a plug, try and plug it in, maybe a silicone plug or something like that. If not, just let it drain and then just uh, <clears throat> filter it or replace your coolant. At this point, the only thing holding the cooler in place is the vacuum line, which uh, is connected to the plastic black actuator on the cooler. So pull this out gently. In my case, it broke. So what I suggest you do is to just sacrifice a little bit of the hose and just split it with a Stanley knife in order to protect the actuator because they get so hot, they get brittle. I bought a new one, uh, which wasn't too expensive, but if you want to avoid that, just uh, split it. I'm going to try and remove this bolt here from the EGR pipe. This is the EGR cooler. This is where the EGR valve sits and this is completely seized. Um, actually, this one is completely seized. This one, uh, even though it's so bad, I still managed to loosen it a little bit. Uh, but this one is completely uh, gone. So it's so badly rusted. It's deteriorated. It's literally falling apart. So I'm going to have to grind a little bit so I can have some surface I can weld on and then I'm going to try and weld another bolt on top of it uh, with a fresh head so I can try and loosen it. So hopefully this will work. So just want to show you what happened. It started loosening a little bit, but then we broke the bolt, so the bolt M6. I'm going to use now M8. I'm going to go with a thicker bolt. So hopefully this will do the job now. Doesn't matter that this one broke, at least it's nice and strong.
so we have a good base to work with and now we're gonna try with a stronger bolt and see if this breaks this completely seized rusty bolt you can see this is absolutely corroded and it's falling apart so let's see what happens next you do it. 